It should be. Okay. Olaf. I'll scoot over. <laughs> it doesn't we're, really matter today. We're going to throw people off. We're going to really throw people off. It's going to be awesome. You're on the wrong side. Okay, guys. Um, Welcome. This morning we're going to talk about one of, sorry, I'm finding us, our all-time uh, favorite tools. Tools. Except Whoa. we're going to mute us because we don't need to listen to us, too. Um, oh God, I'm, so, I'm on top of things. We love design boards. True. We love them. They're awesome. Um, if you don't know what they are, well, I didn't bring a finished one because we're going to make it. You're going to see when we're done. Um, but it's different from a design wall. And, and I love my design wall at and home. We both had a design wall at home before we got design boards. And when we first heard about them, it's like, well, what do I need that for? I have a wall. And they're different. And then for Christmas, two and a half, three, 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 three over three years ago, Mom gave us this quilt kit. It's, it's called Sew by Row by Lori Holt. And Liz and I were going to work on it together. This and is before we quilted for work. Right. It was a long time ago. A while ago. Right. A whole three years. Anyway. Um, Life changes. We were working on it. And I don't know if you noticed, but there are some little pieces in this. This was our first Lori Holt project. And the way this project was initially put out, now there's a printed pattern, was a series of video tutorials with Lori. And so you paid for access to the video tutorials. And she was always using these design boards. And all sorts of other nifty tools that we learned about. And um, about halfway through, we were like, we, we need to make some of those things. And I had the materials at my house. Like because sitting in the garage. We did. That I was about to throw away, actually. And so we ended up making them. But it's because you see all these itty-bitty pieces. These tiny triangles in the tomatoes. Little bitty nine pouches. Um, the scissors had about a thousand pieces. The irons. The iron. There's stack quarter stacks on the bottom of this. I know you can't see them. But they're adorable. They're here. We got fat quarter stacks and swools. Guys, this iron right here, these were three and a quarter inch squares. Three quarter three inch. Three quarter inch squares. It was our first time doing so, itty, 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 itty. It was little. Anyway, I love this project, by the way. It's one of my favorites. We have the pattern in the shop. Yeah. And the fabric. Anyway. anyway. So that's what prompted us to make design boards. So one day at Liz's kitchen, we did, and we watched Lori's video on how to make them. And then we adapted And then it. we said... But I want to do this instead. And so we did. And for a couple of years since, we've been telling everybody, hey, go look at Lori's video. It's great. But this is what we did to change it. And now we're just going to show you what we do. We're going to show you it. how we do it. Um, okay, so to make a design board, materials required. Foam core. If you don't know what foam core is, your kids or you have used it for a science project at some point. It's poster board with foam in the middle, right? Two layers with the foam in the middle. You like this, especially if you're going to do like a Lori Hall applicant project, because you can stick the pins into it, which I do every day. It's our, um, what do I call it? The, I don't know. I did one once. It looked like, uh, it's like words aren't working doll. for me. Not what voodoo doll. It's the doing? acupuncture. It, yeah. It's acu your fabric acupuncture. Fabric acupuncture. Anyway, so we start with. A nice big core. piece of foam core. You can, guys, this is leftover foam core from my husband's office. It's been in my garage for four or five years. We He brought home like 15 pieces one day. They because were, his wife's crafty and he's like, and he's hey, like we, could, we have kids and we could use this. And um, it sat in my garage forever. Jen and I made design boards out of it, like I said, three years ago. And here I am making more design boards out of the foam core in my garage. If you don't have a husband who brings it home from work... It's available at any store. I mean, craft store, any office craft store, store, office Walmart, Walmart, I think, Walmart. has foam core. Um, there are various widths and strengths of it. Don't get the really flimsy Don't stuff. Don't get the really flimsy, flimsy stuff. I have, and, I mean, they just flop. They're, they they don't, don't hold up. Not so worth the effort. A good chunk of foam core. Mostly, they're the 24 by 36 pieces. So, the initial, because Jen and I are stingy. Of ones that we made, we made six out of one piece. So they were 12 inch So they were 12 squares. inch squares, which was great. They're still like my standard size. Yeah. Um, but we're going to make some 18s today because I decided I needed Sometimes you need some bigger ones. Okay, so, so you need foam core. The next thing you need is a piece some of Some sort of string. Batting. And, okay, well, yes. We need still batting. about supplies, darling. Well, you need a straight edge. That's a supply. Well, you okay. do need a straight a edge. A piece of batting that's going to be the size of your finished uh, design board. You can just cut it big and trim it. To me, that's harder. 
I just, it's easier for me to cut Pretty it to my size. We are going to cut all of this out to be 18 inches. So I have my giant 18 inch square. And so it's just, just easier for me to stick an 18 inch square on. But, but if you're making like the 12 inch size, I mean, a lot of times we have 12 inches left over from a quilt. I know I have. This is still quilt left over. Batting scraps inches, everywhere. Batting so it's ears. a great way to use up those scraps that are sitting around. So uh, felt works too. Felt works too. Felt works great. It's really sticky. Remember felt boards from childhood. Felt works great. So if you it's don't it's not have as batting, as batting, but it, it you can it buy works. felt and it's cheap and easy. The next thing is some sort of adhesive. Um, Lori suggests hot glue. Jen and I suggest that that makes it lumpy, and right. we're lazy too. And so I suggest spray adhesive. Spray adhesive. This is cheap spray adhesive, you guys. This is Elmer's. It's not made for putting together a quilt, so you don't need to use the expensive stuff. Uh, it's just Elmer's Craft Bond spray adhesive, and it's like six bucks at Walmart. And uh, I love this stuff, and it's going to work great, and we're going to show you how to do it. Right. And then next, you need, we are going to use some hot glue to get our binding around the, the edge. The binding makes it cute around the edge. And finished. And finished. So we have our binding. I'm going to show you, I've got two different kinds of binding here. I'm going to show you why in a little bit. And then... Oh, you wanted the X-Acto knife. Oh, the, the X-Acto knife to cut the your foam core. Okay. And um, if you don't want to do the binding method and use the hot glue, there's gonna... really cute ornamental duct tape out there. Duct tape has become adorable these days. And there's a lot of cute ones out there. I went to Walmart with my kids this morning because I'm that prepared. And um, we bought mermaid scale duct tape. And we'll show you how you can use that instead of instead the... Of the Batting. batting. Or not batting. Binding. binding. <laughs> I love that we both messed up on the same word. It's a B word. It's We're okay. good. All right. Anyway, okay. So, should we cut foam cord? Let's get started. Let's cut some foam okay. cord. So, I've pre cut a bunch of them, but I'm going to show you a trick with cutting foam cord if you've never done it. Except she's going to trade me places. I'm. What? Oh, you want me to cut on the cutting mat? I'm thinking you should not cut on the nice wood table. Whatever. I cut it on my countertop yesterday. You don't Your cut through all the way. Your countertop's granite. Okay, no, fine. No, it's not granite. granite. It's from right. yeah. Okay, so I'm it's gonna make this 18 inches. Like you want to have a straight edge. It's hard to cut through straight otherwise. Uh, I think when we did this last time, I used my drafting T square, uh, something along those lines. <laughs> I'd like to pretend I'm kidding. I'm not. Um, um, a yardstick would work fine. Too. Yardstick works. Whatever you got, a straight <laughs> edge to be able to follow along. Get your blade out, not too far. You're not going to go all the way through the layers, okay? And you're going to essentially score it in a little bit all the way down. Okay, so scoring means not all the way through. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to cut down here too so I can just cut this thing in half. Okay, so now that I've done that, it's going to break open like this. And you'll notice I didn't cut through the back piece of the paper. This is how you make a nice stand for your kids. Yeah, this is what we use these for science fairs. Because they stand up like <laughs> this. It's so easy. Right? So now I just go through on this side and really cheap and easy can go down the straight line and it comes apart. Right. My edge is a little rough. Doesn't matter. It's going to get covered. covered I get. Okay, and then I can turn it around and do the other direction. But I'm not going to right now because I've already pre-cut a whole bunch of these. Great. Because this is pretending like we're a cooking show. Right. This is our, try and this is our this fake cooking night. show. Woo, okay. All right. So, so we have our piece of foam court already prepared and out of the oven. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So out we have oven. our piece of foam court. You'll notice we're putting this on top of uh, parchment paper, parchment paper, paper, newspaper, paper bags from the grocery store, freezer paper. I don't care. Whatever it is. So no. your overspray doesn't go on your table cutting mat, whatever. Ideally, you you're going to do this outside or in a well-ventilated area. Um, we're going to do it in here and get hot. Right. But we're going to be quick. Okay, so we're just going to try and cover really lightly. Now, if you've watched Lori's Holtz tutorial, she tells you to use a, a glue gun for this. But like Liz and I said, we felt that that would make it lumpy. Because hot glue is lumpy. It is lumpy. Okay, now you're going to put this down. You have a minute to get it fairly accurate. And, and just fairly. And you can kind of stretch it and whatever. It's going to be fine. Because if it's what I want to get rid of, 
is that? There's the the rumples, wrinkles, ripples, ripples. We Please. got it. Whatever you want to call that. Bump. Okay. But see, nice and smooth. Lovely. I have this fantastic piece of batting, stuck to paper. Um, nice and smooth on top of my foam core, right? I'm gonna lose this because it's still attached to glue. Nice. We'll see. Okay. So you guys, this right here is a functional design board. Totally ready to go. Totally ready to go. But we like to make things pretty, pretty, and then finished because that's what we do. Right. So this is where our hot glue comes in. Now, when you make batting, most of us uh, make a, what we call a French batting. Binding. 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 It's still binding, not batting. It's binding. We make a French binding. We cut it at about two and a half inches, fold it in half, put it on, and then you get that nice double coverage on the outside of the quilt so it wears really nice. Mm -hmm. Another form of binding in this world is called is a double a fold. Bias tape, essentially. It's a double fold bias binding. But it doesn't have to be done on bias. Yeah. And so it's... That French batting folded in half and binding. then folded binding. French binding folded in half. Blah, guys. And then folded in half again. So it's that same two and a half inch strip, but with four pressed folds. Okay. If you're going to use it, so if you want to turn this into this, you just open up. You still want that initial fold. You open it up and you're going to press here and press here all the way down. And then you have the same. your your bias binding, your, your double fold bias tape binding. binding. Okay, and then we just put this on with some hot glue. We're gonna, like I said, open it up, and this fold, you guys, it's really tricky. essentially cover right here, and it folds over on both sides. And because this isn't a quilt, it doesn't have to be even. <laughs> no, so it, it doesn't have to perfection, be even. not required. Really easy, you guys. Just a little bit of hot glue with her things I, on. I, I, hold on. Hot glue's not on. Well, it's because I didn't turn the. Um, oh, she didn't turn the power I strip didn't turn, on. I plugged it in, but I didn't turn the power gotcha. strip on. Okay. Um, the other way to do this, actually, do you want to spray a second one? Let's spray a second we'll one so we can do one. both. Is with our fancy schmancy duct tape. Fancy schmancy. Except I'm gonna trade you places. Okay. Because I'm going to spray the... Actually, I'll spray. You do duct tape. I'll duct tape. This is awesome. Okay. I'm going to spray right. this one. She's going to explain. So, duct tape. Really fancy. Where's your scissors? Hold on. I need scissors. She's being needy. I am. This is not um super smelly. No. We're going to work on spray adhesive goes, just so you know. It, it's not as bad as like uh, the 505 spray paint or 505 things. Uh, it's not as good. <laughs> but it works great for this But we project. don't need something like really heavy permanent or anything because that's not what we're, we're going not, for here. We're not going to be trying to pull this off. Okay, so for the duct tape, I'm going to go ahead and just start at an edge here. About half. Of the width that or however however much you want it to show right i mean i don't want to go too far over because i don't want to cover up my design board. i don't want to take an inch of my design board and i just fold it over really tricky like okay and then when i get to the corner here i can just wrap the corner now leave it open because she's going to show you how to open. miter the corner what i'm going to do because if I just keep folding all the way to the corner, this is going to end up on top of itself and it's going to be a little flange. So what I'm going to do is take my little scissors here and cut a slit in the duct tape right there. Okay, so that I'm going to lay this side down first and then lay this side down. And now it's all still totally stuck down and I'm not taping on top of myself. Taping on top of the tape. Yes. So it all stays down instead of having a part that's still loosey loosey. So this is how we duct tape them. Super fast, super simple. And and it's cute. Oh, it works just like that. Mermaid scale duct tape. You can't do that, right? No. Is this being hot? Oh, there we go. Getting some glue out. Okay. Alright. I'm gonna put this back up then. 
All right. So, go ahead. This is the shorter one. We're probably going to have to put two pieces together. Since I made 18-inch design boards, uh, most of my scraps of binding are not that long. Great. How much binding do you need? 18 plus 18 plus 18 plus 18, 18 times 4. So that ends up being quite a bit. But I'm going to show you. You don't even have to seam it. So we're going to put a dot, a dot, a line of hot glue along the front edge of this to hold our binding down. I'm just going to open it up and lay it there. You don't want to go too far with hot glue because it does cool quickly. Yeah. If you haven't worked with it in a long time. I was going to say, I uh, am a professional with hot glue. I, I may have had to tear my sewing room apart this morning to find my hot glue gun. My hot glue gun has been at the shop for the last two years. Right. That's how often I use it these days. So then we're going to go ahead and do the same thing here. We're going to miter the corners, okay? Just like we, if we were doing a quilt. I'm going to come in, do a 45 degree angle, and then go down, put a dab of hot glue under there. To do it, perfectionism not required. Okay? Because, you know, at this point you probably know a thing or two about Jen and I, and perfectionists, we are trying to recover from being. Great. We're recovering perfectionists. <laughs> we're, we're recovering perfectionists. I'm done. She wins. I need more glue. I, I got you glue sticks. Thank you. I, I thought a little bit ahead. Good job. Not enough to get scissors out of it, but... <laughs> we weren't sewing. We weren't sewing. So, I mean, we even set the machine aside. I know. Aren't you guys impressed? We're kind of on top of things. Right? We pretend. Okay. But, guys, this is really quick and really simple. The hot glue... This part we have... Oh. Gotta do my mitering. You gotta miter. It's trickier a little bit with the uh, bias, the the bias tape version. The double fold. The double fold. Well, it's... It's only bias if, if it's cut on the bias. Well, it's, if you go to buy it at Hobby Lobby, it's called bias tape. Right. Hobby Lobby and Joanne's, they call it bias tape. So you can buy it pre-made. Yes, um, that's true. But this is where we're going to get into that uh, fantastic okay. meme of... Have you ever well, seen the one where it's like, I could buy it for, you know, for $10, or I can make it for $95 worth of craft supplies? Right. This kind so, of falls into that category. It definitely falls into this category. So this is definitely something that if you have a lot of these materials sitting around, you know, maybe you just need to go buy some spray glue or something, it's definitely cost effective to make yourself. If you're going to go out and buy all these materials separately... Um, it's not cost sell effective them. to make yourself. You can just buy <laughs> we, a we, we sell design, design boards board. pre-made. So you can buy them pre-made by uh, Riley Blake. We have them in our shop in a lot of different sizes. Um, so yeah, it's so they are easy to make yourself, but it it, it does go into that meme. But if you're gonna myself. go spend three dollars on a package of binding to make um, one, or one or two or two, just just buy it all done. You can buy it done. It's, right. It is an option. Just so you know. The, the other thing I like about doing this with the double fold way instead of the other way I've this seen is it exactly done way. is um, a lot of people burn their fingers quite a bit trying to use the hot glue getting this binding on. And that becomes a non-issue when we do this. Yep. So, last one. Ooh, I might make it. I'm going to make it. Woohoo! Except I'm going to cut off your salvage. Well, no, I'm going to fold it under, so no, you're not. Oh, fine. I won't. Um, I'm going to show you how to finish it. But, yeah. I am can... using the low temp uh, hot glue gun. gun. I did grow up with my mom's giant high temp will burn your fingers off hot glue gun. Yeah. I used it at her house a couple years ago and burned my finger really good. <laughs> because oh. I've gotten used to the cheap and easy low temp safety one. Safety ones. Okay, <laughs> so when I get to the end, you guys, this is fancy. I'm going to fold it back so I have a finished edge. Right, really fancy. Uh, uh, that is, and I'm going to put a dab of glue in there. To, right. To fold it. But that's literally all there is to it. Right, and then we're just going to fold it over on the back and do this um, all over again on the back side. Right. Fancy. See, we're just going to, and then I can come back and kind of get some glue under these spots where... Maybe I don't have it close enough to the edge. But that's easy to do once I get onto the back. I reloaded. Thank you. 
Yeah, and it, does, it takes a lot of glue. It does take a lot of glue. So yeah, I mean, we Jen and I enjoy making them. We are total nerds like that. I mean, that. and I have, guys, I don't think you can have too many. Okay. No. I have, I mean, maybe 14 at home right now. It's not enough. I could use more. So when um, I made my Farm Girl Vintage quilt, which is no longer in the shop because it's at Judy's house, um, I would go out to my kitchen counter because that's where I cut if I'm going to spend a lot of time cutting. And, um, and big. And I would cut 12 or so blocks of time, however many design boards I had. I'd cut that many blocks and get them all laid out. And the picture I post on Instagram today, that's from back when I made that quilt. And if you uh, search Instagram under the hashtag Liz's FGV, Farm Girl Vintage, you will find every single block for that quilt laid out on a design board. Mm -hmm. And um, it really, really sped up that process because then I could chain piece the quilts. I could work on multiple blocks the, at a time. The beauty organized. of them is you can lay out all your blocks at, as they need to be put together on here. So I can lay out all my pieces and so I don't have to go back to the pattern every seam to figure out what comes next. So if you look at the one I posted and, this morning, it right. was the red barn. And after you sew it together, you just you put it back, it back you out. You just put it back where it goes. So it makes that a lot easier. The other thing that's awesome about making these is see this back side of it? It's this slick poster board foam core. It's not sticky at all. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times we make these and we stack them up. So I will have eight stacked of different blocks ready to go. Mm -hmm. And then they can move. So this is where we found them to be really beneficial versus the design wall. Because on a design wall, that's where I put my blocks as I'm arranging my quilt. But when I'm making, when I'm having to do each seam, I mean, my sewing room's small. It's like eight inches wide, eight inches, eight, eight feet. feet. It wide. is small though. Eight feet wide, right? But from going from my sewing machine on this side of the room to my design wall on this side of the room, it's still a lot of movement for every seam. Whereas I could just have it sitting on the right hand of my sewing machine right here and grab it. And so it really does simplify that process. And I know a lot of people, their sewing rooms are a lot bigger. Well, and mine. especially if you sew on your kitchen table and you need to be able to take right. the project this, That's more. the other thing, is if you don't have a dedicated sewing room, this way you can lay it out, um, stack your blocks, stack them on here, and you they can, can put an empty one on top. You can wrap it in a if rubber you've band. If you've ever seen Lori thread. do it, yeah, she'll do a whole bunch of them and put a giant rubber band around the, stop, the top like a gift wrap and then you can travel right um if you saw our liz hartman dinosaurs video you'll see that we used them there in fact those blocks are big with a million pieces I put and so on. we had it spread up across like three design boards the one right. block but it kept it organized and so when you're doing it makes that lots of pieces that stuff so much faster and i did it where i did like six dinosaurs at a time mm -hmm. and so i had them stacked on top of each other here we go. So I knew, you know, the orange went with the orange dinosaur and etc. So this is the binding version with scrap binding. Right. And I will go through in a minute and tack down a few spots. I need more glue. And then this is the duct tape version. Also adorable. Um, right. Both quick and easy. And they are, like I said, as far as I'm concerned with small piecing, uh, game changers. And travel sewing. So our theme for this month is kind of being on the go. And travel and... Jen and I go back and forth between the shop and between here and our homes. And uh, right. we used to sew a lot back when we had time uh, together right. at my house or something. And um, it was an easy way to take projects back and forth. Back and forth. And like I said, yeah, you cut a whole bunch out, stack them all together and travel them in a stack. And it's just quick and easy. Together. And they are a game changer. If you haven't done them or you don't think they're necessary, try one. And it'll be like your first quilter select ruler, and um, you'll need more. Right. And then you might find yourself deciding, I'm not going to sew today. I'm going to make boards. design boards. And you know what? We spent a day when we were doing this project making design boards, and it it, it was wasn't, worth losing the day sewing. It was not a day. And it wasn't a day. It was like an hour and a half. But, well, we also naturally um, assembly line everything. Yeah, we, it's kind of how we are. Sorry. Um, but anyway, it doesn't take long. But 
when it comes to different sizes, sorry, saw the question. Um, I like having a variety of sizes. Now that said, I like having them consistent. So I have my stack of 12 inch design boards, right? Because I like that they're consistent and they can all stack nice and neat. And now I'm creating myself a stack of 18 inch design boards mm -hmm. and they're both very useful in the shop. I think we sell tens. I, I made myself like 15s a and 20s. stack of tens for some of my smaller projects. I like to bring them with me when I'm teaching some of my classes. Mm -hmm. I keep meaning to make a bunch just to stay at the shop for classes. But um, I have tens. I have twelves. I I mean, when I was doing prim, because mm -hmm. those are. 18 They're inch bigger blocks. blocks. They were 18 and a half finished. So it's nice. So to I have made myself one. two 20 inch design boards for that one because I needed to be able to lay it out and pin it and let the applique if you're dry. Gonna do, but I also like to, the applique is in my car traveling. I like to have it on one of these because it keeps it from getting squished. Yeah, you don't get all wrinkled and messy. Um, so yeah, there's your answer. A variety. We like having a variety of sizes. A variety. The twelve. I use my twelves a lot, but the eighteens are going to come in super handy because I need it bigger. Um, uh, the other. Thing, if you were to pick one size to make to begin with, I'd go with twelve. Yeah, because it's not huge and it'll do most things. Like I said, if you go, if you look at my Lori Holt, my Farm Girl Vintage images from before, every last I did all the six and a half inch blocks, and they were all put on a twelve inch design board. Mm -hmm. And it was really versatile and I can really use my 12s for most things. I am excited to have bigger ones. Now you can make whatever size you need. So if you're doing nebula and those are like 20 inch long blocks, make a big one, make a 24 inch one. You totally can. Or you can make it uh, Carrie was in the shop yesterday. She teaches a class and she has one that she makes for when she teaches her class. And I think it's like 18 by 24. Right. And it's great because it's like easel size where she can really demo uh, steps of what she's doing right and so you can make it whatever size you think is going to be most helpful for you and what you're doing and if you're like me you have a variety and the beauty of it is that it doesn't take up a ton of space in my sewing room they right. get uh put behind of i mean my 12 inch ones are on a bookshelf a the yeah. big ones get uh, like leaned up next to a stack of things but they all stack up nice together and so they don't take up a ton of room i'm throwing paper around but uh, yeah, we find them to be very useful and very versatile, and we'll be using them for our next next week couple videos because that's why we made them today. We made them today we so plan. we can use them some more. But right, yeah, because next week we're doing some. Are we doing small piecing next week or raw edge applique? I think we're doing applique. One we'll or the other. Check. One or the other. Our the next, next two, two videos. videos Tiny piecing and uh, raw edge applique. So, we'll see. That's what we'll do. We'll figure it out and we'll let you know which one. But it's <laughs> going to be one of those two things. And uh, if it's not the one you had in mind, it'll be that one the next week. Right. I promise. So, that's our plan. <laughs> hey, Jenny's finished it. Yay. Awesome. Well, have a great day, everybody. Week. And week, weekend. It's almost the weekend. Guys, my husband went back to the office today. It's only been a year. It's been a year. I'm so happy. <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome. Anyway, all right. Have a good see one. Ya. We'll see you. The IG, my Instagram, the hashtag I used real fast is Liz's FGV. So L I Z S F G V. That's the hashtag. You'll find all my farm girl vintage blocks. Okay. See ya.